everybody! Welcome to the weekly recap for the show. That's about as half as long as the actual show. But we're here back for AEW Dynamite, February 20, 2021. How are you doing today? I'm doing better than Lance Archer. We'll what get I, to that. What happened to Lance Archer? Uh, I think Darby's I think Darby's in worse situation than Lance Archer. Or Ryan Nemeth. No, I think Darby's the worst yeah, out of Darby's everybody. Probably the worst from this show. I'm I'm gonna go. Darby is uh got the worst of it. Yeah, I, I could say I could uh, I could agree with that. I could I could see your point of view on that one. So what what did you think of this dynamite? Uh, it was okay. Uh, I mean, I know we throw that around a lot. It could have been better. the The main event really saved it. Let's put it that way. That is true. Up until the main event, it was kind of it was kind of a weird show like some of these things were just like why am i watching lee johnson team up with cody against peter avalon and cesar somebody whatever the hell his name is caesar bonanza i don't know whatever (laughs) like why is this on aew dynamite other than cody right yeah true and then uh Pack and Ryan Nemeth was a comedy match, although I don't think it was supposed to be. And then Thunder Ro- Thun- uh well, well, we'll get to it, but something really, really set me off in the Layla Hirsch versus Thunder Rosa match. Like, to the point where I just was like, ah, I want to stop watching. I- I'm done with Thunder Rosa after this. It was stupid. Up until I'm now, I it took you this long. Up until now, I just thought it was funny that she, you, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. Let, okay, let's just okay. let's just start from the beginning. So AEW Dynamite, February. What's up? February tenth. Oh, I have February twentieth somehow. Did I say twentieth at the beginning? Anyway, it's anything. really it's really February tenth, two thousand twenty-one. So for some reason, I wrote down February twenty. Anyway, we're starting off with the TNT title match. Joey Janela versus Darby Allen, and it occurs to me that Joey Janela looks like Chris. If Chris Jericho from the '90s drank like Chris Jericho from 2021, <laughs> that's what he would look like. <laughs> what did you think about the match, though? That's a fair point. Um, it wasn't as wild and action-packed as I thought it was going to be. I mean, don't get me wrong. These guys put their bodies out there, and they did some crazy stunts, but I really thought this was going to be completely over the top considering the two, the two of their, uh, you know, uh, backstory and the type of wrestling that they do. Uh, and it really didn't reach that momentum to me. So it was, it was good, but it wasn't... I'm not expecting these guys to go through plate glass windows every match, but I really thought it would be a little crazier considering the... the yeah, uh, the I, I, I think yeah. they probably want to... I think for one, they want to prove that, you know, it's not when these two guys get in the ring, it's just not about crazy stunts and doing Mm -hmm. stupid things like trying to kill themselves. And also, they're going to save the crazy, stupid stuff trying to kill each other for the pay-per-view. And for and for a crowd. True. True. So two th- two things that are you know severely missing obviously on a one thing weekly th- dynamite. Yeah. One thing I thought was funny about this match is when the announcers start to talk about Janela's weight advantage. And like, <laughs> he does. <laughs> that goes but without not, saying. Yeah, but not for the reasons stated. You know, it's not like he's got like twenty pounds of muscle <laughs> extra. That's what I was getting at, but. So Janela is taking control of this match in the beginning, and he, it looks like he's kind of playing the bad guy role here. I mean, he is the bad boy, so he's kind of being a little more dickish than he usually is. But uh, there's a cool arm ringer from the top rope on, onto, you know, s- smashes his arm on the top rope by Darby. Um, there was a nice springboard off the second rope by Darby, but Janela caught him, hit him, hit a German. That was pretty good. Pile driver by Janela, then an avalanche code red, and eventually Darby hits an STO with a hammer lock uh, applied, and then hits the coffin drop and gets a three. So was I was okay. Like uh, it was pretty good. I thought it was nice that Darby kind of got like a clean win, not dominant, but like a fairly easy win. Mm-hmm. It, you know, I mean, he is the champion, so he should. 
you should be beating guys up like Janela, especially considering how much offense Janela got on Kenny Omega and Jericho the last two times we saw him on Dynamite. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That was a pretty clean coffin drop. I mean, they usually look pretty clean, but he hit him square on. Uh, that, was, that was nice. Yeah, th- those probably aren't fun to take. If you're the <laughs> no, they're... If you're the guy. Even though Darby, you know, Darby is a pretty small guy, doesn't weigh a lot. I'm sure it, it hurts like hell, even Oh yeah. Even with that. I bet. Surprisingly, yeah. I gotta say that uh Team Taz didn't make an appearance in this match. Yeah, they, they said that they mm-hmm. would make a match. Uh they would make an appearance, but I don't know, maybe they got something else planned. You know Yeah. No, you never know. Foreshadowing there. May- you never know. Maybe they've given up the ghost. Maybe they're cool with Darby and Sting now. So anyway, I've talked to Beach Blaster X, and he's been telling me about this New Japan thing, so I've got some notes. So the Excalibur says the Forbidden Door has been kicked open by Kenta. So do you know what the Forbidden Door is? No. So apparently, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling got this CEO named Harold Mage, and he... Talked about the forbidden. I th- I th- I'm pretty sure it was Harold Mage. It was somebody else. I apologize, but he talked about the forbidden forbidden door that uh, you know, it's an imaginary thing where there's a a doorway between AEW and New Japan that's closed. So, uh, they didn't work with New Japan. So AEW from pretty much from the beginning wanted to work with New Japan, but New Japan didn't want to work with uh. AEW, and it's pretty much because of the CEO Harold Mage, and he's gone. I don't know when he was gone. Uh, I didn't get that from Beach Blaster X, but he's been gone for a while now. So it looks like the Forbidden Door is kicked open, and AEW is going to be working with New Japan. So we've got the lineup for tonight. Kenta from New Japan Pro Wrestling is going to be teaming up with Kenny Omega versus John Moxley and Lance Archer, and it will, this will be in a false count anywhere no DQ match which uh, I don't know how you do a false count anywhere that's not no DQ. But anyway, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad they cl- cleared that up. Jericho and MJF is taking on the acclaim. Sting is going to talk about his... Uh, he's going to talk about the upcoming match at the street fight at the Revolution pay-per-view. Pac versus Ryan Nemeth. And in the women's title eliminated tournament, Layla Hirsch versus Thunder Rosa. But first, we get John Moxley speaking. So he talks about Kenta and his stupid little briefcase. And the time for cheap talk is over. February 26th, he's going to defend the IWGP United States title. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, Against Kenta. And he notes that he's teaming with a guy who tried to kill him multiple times. Good stuff from Mox as always. Anything you want to add on this? Another great promo by Mox. He... uh... He delivers every time, so there's nothing really else to say about it. I loved his little dig on Kenta, <laughs> this stupid little stupid briefcase. little briefcase. <laughs> That's so good, so good. So the best part about this was for me is that he acknowledges that Lance Archer has tried to kill him multiple times. Usually in wrestling and especially WWE, it's like, "Oh, you beat my ass last week, but now we've got a common enemy. Now we're best friends." And it's like, <laughs> we're "Come cool. on, dude." <laughs> Come on, dude. You guys hated each other last week. But at least in AEW, they're acknowledging that Mox and Archer are, they're not friends, you know, but they've just got a yeah, common. Put aside their differences for one day. Right? They've got a common, they've got a common enemy. But more importantly, they want to win the match. Because why? Because wins and losses matter. <laughs> Which is how Janela got this match against uh, Darby Allen previously. We should find a way to work that into every recap. Wins and losses matter. I think we have been. Yeah. Speaking of things we uh, work into every recap, what, what, what shirt you got on there, pal? I was just about to ask you the same there, buddy. So you've got an All Elite all Wrestling elite Mox. yeah. Moxley shirt. Very nice. I'm a Mox Mark. I tried to wear it hoping that, uh, you know, well, I was trying to give my boy some you know, support through the uh, through the uh, screen there. I see. I Tell see. me more about the. Uh, so this is there? a shirt that I bought. I thought this was like a. I don't know what King Switch is, but I thought this was like a cool, like skull spider, kind of like Venom or something. <laughs> yeah. That's a shirt that you bought, huh? A Bullet Club shirt, no less. 
I can see that on the on the left sleeve. Yeah, there. I think this is like I I guess that's like the thing, huh? Yeah, it's like a it huge just keeps coming up. It's like yeah. a huge thing in Japan where it's like the it's a it's like a they they talk about those New Japan guys who are in Bullet Club and it's like a T-shirt brand too. It's freaking crazy, man. I don't know. I don't know if that would work here in America, you know. But whatever. Mm. Yeah. Because they're not throwing references around on that in the American and I, I, All Elite Wrestling every week, right? No. Bullet Club. No. So we've got up next. We've got Cody Rhodes and Lee Johnson. I wrote Lee John John for some reason, but <laughs> Lee Johnson versus Peter Avalon and and I wrote Peter Bonanza because I don't I, Caesar Banana right or something like that. Bononi. Bon Bononi. Oh, no. Bononi. Not, Bononi. Not banana. No. <laughs> okay. But first, we've got uh, Sammy in the locker room. Sammy Guevara's in the locker room, and he wants to talk to MJF. And so everybody leaves. Uh, Hager leaves, Santana and Ortiz leaves, and MJF tells Wardlow to leave too. And Sammy says, tells Max he knows what he's trying to do, and he knows that he's trying to take over the inner circle. And MJF says, you know what? It's not jealousy. This whole thing with you, Sammy, it's not jealousy. He knows he hates Jericho. And Sam, Sammy sarcastically says, yes, I hate Jericho. I want to take over the inner circle. And MJF says, you know, that's exactly what I wanted to hear. And he recorded him on his phone. And Sammy takes the phone and throws the phone against the wall. And he punches MJF. And MJF goes down. And he kind of, like, looks at the camera. And he kind of looked like he was smiling. It was, like, for a split second. But did you catch? Am I the only one? Or did you catch that, too? I noticed that too. I thought that was a little. Was that? Yeah, I guess that was meant to be seen, right? Yeah. So. I don't know. But anything? Uh, thoughts on this one? This was really good. I was gonna say at the beginning when we were talking about this dynamite that I think a lot of the stuff that happened behind the scenes, the promos, the segments, were way more important than the matches. Really. That's and true. This was one of them. This was huge. Like, I we we knew something was coming right with the inner circle and. Uh, I can't say I expected it this quickly, actually. I thought they were going to build this up a little bit more, at least until the end of Revolution. I thought so, it was going to be played up a lot longer, too, but I guess it's... Yeah. As we see, it's going gonna, it's gonna to hit the fan later on tonight. Yeah, it's ramping up quick. Um, they're, uh, they're moving forward, so I liked it. You know, it, it brought it to a head. So it, we got Cody and Lee Johnson against Avalon, and this time I wrote Vito Bonanza. So, one of these this guy's name. one of these names are, is right, but I hope he's taking notes. These are names that he could use. Vito Bonanza. I don't think he's gonna change it now, but whatever. Vito Bonanza. <laughs> so, Cody comes out and he he fist bumps some guy in the crowd, and I immediately knew who this guy was. Like as soon as I saw him, I was like, "That's Arn Anderson's son." Even though I've never seen him before, because he looks like Arn Anderson from twenty years ago, thirty years ago, yeah. twenty, 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 thirty years ago, whatever. So it's like Brock or Rock Anderson. Yeah, I didn't catch his name, but it was either Brock or Rock. I, that's something what I heard like too. that. Yeah, probably he's huge. He yeah. is huge. Yeah. Yeah. So they so they say he's training, and he'll. Uh, I guess he'll be a wrestler sooner than later. So the match starts. Cody stomps a mud hole in Peter, and you know bunch of crap they go to break they go back uh back from break cody has now injured his shoulder oh no whatever but then he tags in lee uh corkscrew he does a lee johnson does an awesome corkscrew dive onto caesar on the outside and then somebody hits who, who is this who is this oh so he hits a fisherman's neck breaker on peter avalon and then bonanza breaks it up and then he tosses Cody out. He slams Lee Johnson. But then Cody goes and attacks him on the outside. Avalon goes for a double knees on Lee Johnson. He gets out of the way. And then they keep calling him Shoddy Lee in this match. I don't know why. I guess that's Big his, Shoddy, yeah. I guess that's his nickname or something. But then he rolls up Peter Avalon for the three. And they note that this is the first win of a his AEW career. And he looks happy and overcome with emotion. And the Nightmare family come out to cheer him on. And this, for me at least, felt like a real moment. So, what did you think about this? Uh, I agree with you. It's um, 
It's nice that he was able to pull out his first win. I've seen him on Dark whenever I do occasionally watch Dark. And sometimes he shows up on Dynamite. But yeah, he's lost pretty much every match. I mean, he did lose every match because this was his first one. And uh, I was shocked later on when they exactly, um, they give the exact tally of how many matches he's lost until this, until he won this one. And uh, like you said, it was good. It was a nice moment. I'm glad, you know, he picked up the win. And uh, I got to say... Who would have ever thought you'd see Peter Avalon on Dynamite two weeks in a row? <laughs> was it only last week that he wrestled yeah, Cody? Yeah, it was last week. I'm pretty sure that he wrestled Cody. Was it, wasn't it? it last week? I, I could have swore. I, I don't know. But yeah. Well, Cody's on, he'll, Cody will do everything, anything to get on every week, right? So maybe it was last week. I don't know. That's true. But Shivani's talking with Lee Johnson now, and he says he wishes he had the words. He, he was 0-29, uh, he was 0-29, but... All the trainers and the Rhodes family showed him, and for some reason he calls out Brandy. Right, that was weird. Yeah, even he's even like Brandy. he's like Art Anderson, Dustin Rhodes, Cody, and hell, even Brandy. Like, <laughs> what if you? What, why? What? Like, I'm sure Brandy helped. Come on, she's gonna be a mom. He's that was, so, yeah, was yeah. kind of. Are you like Jade's brother or something? What the hell, man? That was kind of so, underhanded compliment. Yeah. Huh? You so, got bitch Brandy. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what it felt like he was trying to say. Yeah. And they showed him that if you do the work, it pays off. And the Rhodes family is his family. So this was good. This is how uh, I, I guess they see a lot in Lee Johnson. And from what I saw, he was, he was okay. Uh, and he kept up. Yeah, this, he, is, he, this, is how a, move. this is how a star was born. So in the back, we've got the Young Bucks, and they talk about how they uh, were eliminated. Uh, Dasha asks them about how they were eliminated, and they say, well, why don't we ask these guys? And it's the Good Brothers. And Nick says, you know, you guys interrupted me. I got eliminated. And Matt says, you guys are dumbasses because we, if we won, we could pick our opponents, and we were going to pick you. And the Good Brothers say, well, our beef is with Private Party, and they should be pissed off at Santana and Ortiz because they were the ones that actually eliminated them and then matt says you know what i'm fired up i want to defend the tag team titles let's defend them against santana and ortiz next week so and they just announced that that's the match next week of course later on the announcers are playing it up as like you know the challenge has been issued but at first it was just like yeah the match is next week and then carl says you know he wants a two sweet and matt says nah but then nick does it and the good brothers go off and you can hear them ask sting for a two sweet so yeah, what'd you think of this one? It was funny. It 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 served its purpose. I I like the dynamic between the Young Bucks and the Good Brothers, but I wonder how much longer it can go on. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know how long this impact in AEW uh, relationship is for. So I don't know if the shit's gonna hit the fan. I guess is what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, I, I I it's probably gonna be like. At this point, I feel like it's gonna be like just around in the background because like what would the end game even be so i feel like it's just gonna be like something they can like oh yeah these guys are from impact just something to come back to here and there once in a while whatever i don't know yeah they're on bte every week too so we'll see we'll see okay so now we've got Dasha, and she's with Hangman, and he's talking like, I don't want anything to do with Matt Hardy. But then Matt Hardy says, yeah, you know what? I rented a bar, and you can come drink, and it's all free. It's on me. And Hangman's like, all right, shoots. Yeah, I'll go to the bar with you. And then he runs into the Dark Order, and they kind of have an awkward moment of like, oh, like two people. Exes. Two people <laughs> two just exes. broke up, and they're like, oh, <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, 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 whatever. But yeah. Hey, you look good. Yeah, uh, Good to see you. Yeah. What what do you think about this? <laughs> the Dark Order segment was way better than the Matt Hardy and Hangman segment of this. I don't know where they're going with this Matt Hardy thing. Uh, well, I, I think guess we'll see later yeah. on. So apparently yeah. it's going to be one of those things where everybody's going to try to recruit Hangman. So maybe like mm. maybe Team Taz will try to recruit him. Jake Roberts will co- try to recruit him. Sting maybe will try to recruit him. I don't know. But, you know, maybe the the... The nightmare He'd be perfect with FTR. The, the nightmare realized. family. Why would he be perfect yeah. with FTR? His whole gimmick is like he's like a horseman, right? Yeah, but he or... had that whole thing with FTR, and they don't like each other anymore. That's true. 
So uh, well, we... you know, I mean, it's wrestling, right? <laughs> they yeah. forgot about that whole thing. That was, that but that's the good the thing bridge. about AEW is that they don't forget about that kind of thing. That's true. So we've got Pac versus Ryan Nemeth. And like I said earlier, this was a freaking comedy match. Because Pac just beats his ass over and over. And Ryan Nemeth is on the ground, like, screaming in agony, making the most, like, ridiculous faces. And Pac is just staring down at him, like, if this, I, re- like, he, you can look, see the look on Pac's face. And it's just like, I actually want to really beat this guy's ass because he's just making a joke out of this. And anyway, it's funny because you can see Pac really wants to beat his ass. And he kind of does. <laughs> <laughs> And Ryan Nemeth is just overselling this. He's making the most ridiculous faces. It's just weird. Uh, Pac hits a nice top rope shotgun drop kick. Uh, some brutal kicks. And then Ryan counters with a drop kick and a DDT. He chases Pac outside, but his advantage is over already because Pac turns the tables, <laughs> throws him against the ring, stomps the crap out of him. Ryan Nemeth looks dead. He hits a black arrow to the back into the brutalizer. Immediate tap out. Pac holds on to the brutalizer after the match, and Ryan Nemeth is out there making faces. So, yeah, this was. I don't think the intended purpose was to make this a comedy match, but it kind of was for me because Ryan Nemeth just <laughs> man, that's just those like facial expressions he had just turned this into a total joke. Even though, even while you're seeing Pac. Like, as serious as, you know, the most serious person on the roster, probably, you know. But, yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was comedic. What did you think? Did you, did you think it was comedic, too, or what did you think? I was 99% sure this was going to be a squash match, and it was. uh, So I wasn't surprised by that. But, yeah, he was pulling off some, like, 90s era Jim Carrey faces when they were doing this match. It's like, <laughs> it was like, whoa. And at one point towards the end before um before uh Pac did the black arrow, I was like, is he like literally like asleep? <laughs> like it looked like he was like completely out. <laughs> yeah. You know, like like I, I, I'm just leave me alone. Like I don't even want to be in this match anymore. And I was like, he's really overselling this, you know. Yeah, I I, I don't get it. But anything else? Before we move on no he took that black arrow though i mean to the back that mm. must have hurt like, i don't think he, i don't think he had a choice yeah that's true so quick out of all the things that happened on AEW dynamite last week which is the thing that you want to see most recapped here in a video package if you said the Never wedding in penelope <laughs> and kip then this was the recap for you because for some reason we need to see a video recap of the friggin' wedding. And Penelope, Kip, and Miro are there, and they talk about Charles. And Miro says, it's not Charles, it's about Orange Cassidy. And he wants to beat up Orange Cassidy, and he's going to put him in the hospital like Trent. And then they cut, for some reason, they cut to a clip of Orange Cassidy and Chuck Taylor on a sofa drinking champagne. And Orange says, I mean, what did they think was going to happen? Orange Cassidy pops out of the cake and Orange Cassidy and Chuck toast with the champagne. So, yeah, I'll let you I'll let you uh, talk about this. You know, just when I think that we've pretty much hit our limit with this storyline, they just keep coming back for more, man. It's not over. It's like an all you can eat buffet. It's like like the it's like the notebook. It never ends. Yeah, I don't know where this is going. I. I honestly think this feud could last throughout the year, which is insane, but it's already gone about three months over what it should have. So, so yeah. well, why don't we get another three months out of it? I, I don't know. Like, it, it's funny, it's funny too, to because do. I actually didn't think the wedding was ha- all that bad. Like, I didn't think it was spectacular, but I was just like, eh, whatever, it's cool. But the internet wrestling community did not like this wedding at all. So AEW, because they just thought it sucked. And Mm. AEW is pretty good about keeping, you know, keeping on the pulse of what their fans are thinking. So I don't know why they would do this video recap when it was pretty much uh, panned by most of the... Dead on arrival. 
and now Most they're keep going. Fans. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they should kill this storyline. The only thing I can think of is they don't know what to do with the best friends, and they don't know what to do with Miro. Kip, That's even, probably I guess, true. Is, is a casualty of this. Like, you know, so I don't know. Maybe after Revolution, we'll get something. I really don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So Dasha is now with Jericho, Hager, and Wardlow, and she notes that there's people missing from the inner circle. And MJF shows up and. His ribs are all taped up, and he says, Sammy Sucker punched me. My ribs are all hurt. And Jericho looks concerned. So then they say the issue has been challenged to Santana and Ortiz. And I don't know why Santana and Ortiz would say no, but yeah, so they were issued a challenge by the Young Bucks for next week for the title. And JR, in one of the lines of the night, says, You know, drama and pro wrestling go hand in hand. <laughs> And definitely one of my favorite lines of the night. Couldn't have said it better. So we've got a Jericho and MJF insert, and Max just says the acclaimed wouldn't have a shot if it wasn't for him. I don't know why, but okay. So they're out. Max is selling the ribs, and Caster is really miscast as a as a bad guy. I don't know what it is, but he's. He has like a good guy quality to him. Bowens, I can see as a bad guy, but Caster, even though I don't like their stupid rap gimmick, like for some reason, there's something likable about Caster to me. I don't know what it is. And so they start the match, and Bowens is beating up MJF. He's screaming in pain about those ribs, but then they get the <laughs> advantage because MJF and Jericho do the old double eye rake while the ref is not looking. They go to break. Back from break, Caster's in trouble. He gets he tags in Bowens. He runs wild. Caster hits Jericho with the boombox, but Jericho kicks out. Holy crap. So then they try to go for their move, the claim to fame, but uh, they miss. Uh, Bowens tries to dive on MJF on the outside, but he misses too. Hager pushes Caster off the top, and Jericho lands the Judas effect for the three and the W. What do you think of this match? Holy crap, Jericho kicked out of that boombox hit. That was nuts. Yeah. I, really, I, I, I don't know. It, it is what it is. I, I really thought that that was the end. I was like, holy shit, he hit it. Like, the acclaimed is going to win this match. And, you know, it was going to lead to more, you know. Um, the first I loss of say. MJF and Jericho. And then Max is going to blame, oh, you know what? I couldn't come and save because my ribs were too sore. Sammy's, exactly. Sammy's the reason. That's what I thought was going to happen. It. I, you nailed it. I thought for sure they were. This was going to be another breakdown of the inner circle, like falling apart. Like, like you said, MJF's going to be like, you know, I couldn't help you because Sammy broke my ribs, you know, and sorry, you know. Uh, but it didn't. He kicked out, and they won the match, which is weird. Yeah. I think the acclaimed is better. Um, like you said, better cast as good guys. Definitely, yeah. definitely caster at least. Like when you said that about Bowens, you're right. Something about Bowens, he just seems like. Like a bad guy more than a good but guy. But Bowens Caster? can be Bowens can be either either way. I feel like he's mm. oh he's better as a bad guy. But I don't know what it is. Caster just seems like a good guy to me for some reason. I have no. He does kind of have like a like a baby face look to him. So I can see that. Maybe um, maybe that's it. I don't know. He just has a he is one of those unique uh unique things where you just want to root for the guy for some reason. It's too bad because I like you've watched week in week out. I've been panning the hell out of this. Their gimmick, this rap gimmick, is just bad. I'm not the biggest fan of their gimmick, but they were pretty good in this match. They kept up. Um, they they kept the pace up. They knew when to you know hit most of the moves. There was a couple of things that they could have done better, but they're getting better and better. And uh, being able to keep up with Jericho and MJF without looking, I well, yeah. I disagree. I don't think they kept up with MJF and Jericho at all. Oh, really? Okay. Not like how Top Flight did. Yeah, that's true. Those guys are, yeah. Well, Those guys are something else that's, considering their age. That's too. not fair, yeah. too, because Top Flight is like 10 years ahead of where they probably should be. Which is insane because they're only, what, 21 and, and 19, 19? Something like that, yeah. yeah. They're, li they're light years ahead of how good they should be it's crazy. Yeah, it's it's not just a couple of years younger than us, you know. So yeah, good for those guys. Yeah, that's true. A couple of years younger. We 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 could. It's not too late for us. But after the <laughs> match, after the match, Sammy comes out and Jericho's like, "What's the problem, dude? Like, 
What's what's wrong, man? And then Sammy says, "You know what? I told you on what was it, December 9th, twenty twenty, yeah, December 9th, twenty twenty. He said that if one more thing happened with MJF, he's done. So he's here to say he's done." And Jericho's like, "What do you mean, man?" And Sammy says, "I quit the inner circle," and he walks off. And then he's walking off. Sammy's walking out of the parking lot. He's leaving through the gate. And Marvez comes by and says, why? (laughs) Because apparently Alex Marvez does not watch AEW Dynamite or has been keeping up with this storyline for the past, like, two, three months. And Sammy says, you know, we need some time away. And Excalibur says, well, Sammy's leaving. Uh, We don't know what that means. It's like, I think it means he's leaving. Yeah. I guess what he meant is he doesn't know if like Sammy's leaving Dynamite for like tonight or if he's going to take an extended period of time away. I mm-hmm. think that's what he's getting at. But make note that Alex Marvez is currently at Dynamite, which, <laughs> which will come into play later on, right? Foreshadowing. Yeah. yeah. So anything you want to add about this one? Anything about Sammy's deal or what, what they all said, the inner circle? I like where this is going. Uh, I like that they're giving Sammy a push, I think. Uh, I think he's very talented, obviously, as a wrestler. And I think he can do a lot more on promos, too. MJF is just too good as a heel. I, I don't know how to say it. Like, he's perfectly cast as a heel. The whole time he's uh, Sammy and Jericho are going over this, MJF is just looking, at, you know, behind Jericho's back, looking into the camera like, yeah, what's happening? <laughs> you know, he's just smiling like, oh, shoot, he's leaving? Whoa, weird. Who would have thought this would have happened? Like... He can't keep his emotions to himself. He's just so good at playing so a role when he needs to. Do you think they'll do the old double cross switcheroo where it'll come down to a head where, you know, MJF says, you know what? You made, you know, under your leadership, Sammy quit the inner circle. So I want to be the leader of the inner circle. And they have a match. And then Sammy comes back and actually helps MJF. And they kick out Jericho. I don't know. That's a good. With so Jericho would actually be the face from this, then, huh? Yeah. For you know, for his his one final run, because mm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I have no idea if he's actually going to retire anytime soon or not. But you know, his his last his last run as a good guy, Jericho, and he can go out and drive off into the sunset as a, and everybody loves him. Guy. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. It could go either way. That's a good... I don't know, man. I mean, all my time watching wrestling has trained me to never trust anybody. So I'm always thinking, you know what? MJF and Sammy are in cahoots. Yeah, That's a good point. Never trust the product in front of you, right? Yeah. It, it could be something completely out of left field. Yeah. It but, was me, Austin. It was me all along. Yes. But so now we've got Hangman and Matt Hardy at the bar, and they be drunk. And Matt says, oh, you know, you know, I've got this contract. You know, I can make you millions and all it's going to cost you is 30 percent of those millions. And it's like, what? <laughs> OK, Hardy's not even drinking. He's throwing the drinks out. So uh, our hangman's extra yeah. drunk. So he yeah. tells uh, he tells Hangman, hey, I got a contract. And Hangman's like, yeah, I- I'll sign it. And Matt looks at the camera. He's like, I want this to be documented, blah, blah, blah. But meanwhile, Hangman tosses Matt's contract, takes out his own contract from the con- from his jacket and he signs it and Matt not knowingly signs that contract too. And yeah. So we don't know Makes what's it. we don't know what's on this new contract, but I'm going to tell you right now that's not how contract law works. But this is wrestling. Tell me more. But this yeah. is wrestling, so whatever. What did you think about this? This segment was brilliant. Uh, I liked this segment, and I like where this is going way better than anything else they've done with this whole Matt Hardy Hangman segment. I know it's only been a couple weeks, but I like that Hang or that Matt Hardy was this. He just keeps this whole shyster, you know, persona up. He throws the drink out when Hangman is drinking. Like <laughs> and he's acting like he's drunk. Oh, I'm drunk too, man. But you know what? We should we should solidify this relationship and get a contract signed. Even though you know he hasn't had a single drink probably, and Hangman's uber drunk, right? But just like AEW does a really good job of of pushing this, and you've brought it up before, they make sure that the babyface is not the stupidest guy in the room, right? 
because a lot of wrestling organizations would do that. Like he's the biggest idiot. He's always going to get taken advantage of. And I was like, oh, poor Hangman. He's going to get taken advantage of. As soon as Matt Hardy looks away, he pulls out another contract. So good. Gets gets Hardy to sign it. Brilliant. Wait. Really well done. Way to go. Yeah. So now we've got Sting. He's going to talk to Tony Schiavone. Except Sting doesn't say a damn thing because Team Taz interrupts. Not the worst thing in the world, but... You know, Taz is for some reason in the driver's seat of a truck and he's got powerhouse Hobbs in the passenger seat and we're like, why the hell is he in a truck? But we find out because Cage and Starks have beaten the crap out of Darby Allen and put him in a body bag. And I'm still thinking of, okay, so that's fine and dandy. Cage and Starks beating up Darby, put him in a body bag. But why was Taz in a truck? <laughs> And then we find out exactly why. Because the body bag is tied to the truck. And Taz drives off, dragging poor Darby Allen on the road in a body bag. And so we said that Darby Allen ends up worse for wear out of everybody else on Dynamite. Your thoughts? <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. Team Taz always always knows how to one up themselves, huh? You know, a couple of weeks ago they beat up some poor merch vendors. Now they're gonna drag Darby Allen's lifeless body through the parking lot. <laughs> wow, you know, it seems like something Darby would do on his own, anyways. But it's weird when somebody else does it to you, right? Yeah. So, and Sting, I guess, comes out with the semi save. I don't know. It didn't look like he was in a real hurry to save Darby. <laughs> yeah. This reminded me of the time that the big show, um, the big show tied the big boss man's. No, wait. No, the big boss man tied the big show's dad's coffin to a truck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and drove oh. off while the big boss. I remember was... that. Yeah. While the big show like jumped on the casket. Jumped on the coffin. Yeah. That was hilarious. I mean, because of course we know Big Show's dad didn't die and wasn't really in the coffin. It was all for a wrestling storyline, but that was really funny. The big boss man, you know, he was in some he was in some bangers, like when he kidnapped Al Snow's dog and fed it to him. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. I forgot about all this. Yeah. He was a he was a real bad guy. Yeah, he had some he real. He actually was my favorite wrestler for a while, but oh, this no was way. this was back way way in the day and like the. It, it only lasted like a few months or so. About like, yeah. <laughs> I love that he was a cop, but he was like the most <laughs> crooked cop you could ever. No, he imagine. was a he was a prison security guard. He was, oh, he was. He was? Yeah. Oh, that was the original okay. game. He was a prison security guard, which I guess is it. Are, are they cops? No, they're they're not. Cops, cops. Department right? of Corrections, yeah, different. They're they like really they're the like law. related, but they're not actual police officers, right? Yeah, no. I guess that makes more sense. So now we've got Kenny Omega. He's on the golf course, and Alex Marvez has showed up. And I gotta, I gotta agree with Kenny. Like, he's he's gotta be like, why the hell is this guy just showing up everywhere I am? And he even showed up at my house one day when I wasn't even there. Like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? But he says, watch, watch this shot. And Alex Marvez is like, dude, you've got a match tonight. And Kenny's like, no. Like, I'm like the best ever pro wrestler. So I don't need to actually prep. What do you want me to do? I'm out here enjoying life. And I'm prep prepping emotionally and spiritually and all that crap. So meanwhile, in the background, Don Callis is manipulating the ball so that it goes in the hole. And, <laughs> and Kenny's like, yeah, you know, like, awesome. I made it in. I'm, 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 I'm like the best golfer in the world, too. And he takes the ball and he says he gives he gives, he stuffs it in Marvez's jacket. And he says, you know what? This is this is going to be a souvenir. It's going to be worth a lot of money someday. And then Callis just says uh, he's probably going to sell that on MySpace. <laughs> it's like, OK. And then Alex Marvez says, hey, can I get a ride? And Kenny and Don Callis are like, no. But he made it back to Dynamite somehow because, you know, he followed out Sammy Guevara on the yeah. earlier segment. But anything you want to add on this one? <laughs> These segments are great just for the reason that uh, Marvez is just 
completely clueless and i love that the biggest tool but he's he's like a likable tool yeah it's perfect and i love that and you know he just keeps kind of stalking kenny you know like yeah. when he was at his house it's you're at my house marvez is nothing sacred you know this is so good and just everything to do with don Callis is so good as well hey you did it again kenny you scored another eagle 10 for 10 weird right <laughs> So he's at negative 20 on hole 10 then. <laughs> yes, which is ridiculous. I don't think that... I, I guess that's probably never happened in a, like a actual... Maybe in like mini golf or something, but not an yeah, actual real golf actual course. Not an actual course, yeah. Unless it's on like it was, Nintendo or something. Yeah. Yeah, so true. after this, we've got in the Women's Title Eliminator Tournament, Layla Hirsch versus Thunder Rosa. Okay, so here we go. So <laughs> they have a there's a little inset about Thunder Rosa and she just pretty much she wants to win all the belts and she wants to beat up Brit. So okay. So Thunder was in control. Okay, let me let me preface this by saying this match was pretty good until one part, and we'll get there. But what did you did you like this match? Actually, it was pretty good. It was more technical than I thought it would be. Like, they were actually doing a lot of grappling. Like, it was, like, real Greco-Roman kind of wrestling for a little while there. Greco-Roman. Uh, yeah. Man. So, that out there. right off the bat, Thunder's in control, but then Layla hits a uh, jumping springboard hurricane run off the top rope, and uh, he, she, does a, she does a dive and hits her head on the back of the safety rail, and Shivani actually points it out, which was actually pretty cool. And she tries the arm bar, but then Thunder counters it and gives her a rude awakening between the ropes. I thought that was pretty cool. So back from the break, Thunder is in control. She hits a diving clothesline into the turnbuckle, like two seconds after they're back from like they're back yeah. from the break. It's like, hey, we're back from the break. And it's like, boom, clothesline. It's like, oh, that was. And it was one of those close up shots where she like she's like right in the the, the camera's like right there. But I thought that was a pretty cool visual. And then she does a diving drop kick. Layla hits a diving crossbody for two. Uh, she does a moonsault. Thunder gets the knees up. So this was this is one of the things, minor nitpick, but this is one of the things that kind of was weird. So Layla goes for the moonsault. Thunder puts the knees up. And so I type, Thunder gets the knees up. I look up, and Layla is kneeing Thunder Rose in the face. I'm like, what the fuck happened? Right? Yeah. Didn't she just get her moonsault countered? Like, in the time I took, Thunder gets the knees up. That's how long it took for Layla all of a sudden to be in control again. So, what the hell was this? But she misses another moonsault. And then th uh, Thunder hits a diving knee for two. Layla, and then uh, Thunder Rosa goes for a thunder fire thunder driver. And Layla counters this into the arm, arm bar. And this is it, folks. This is... The dumbass move of the year. Layla is in the cross arm breaker, but her shoulders are down on the mat. And the referee counts one. The referee counts two. And then Thunder Rosa picks her up to do a power bomb. Are you serious? This was the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. She would have just won the match right there, but she picks her up for a power bomb for. I don't know what reason this is, but it works out anyway because she does a power bomb and then she hits the fire thunder driver and wins. So I guess it's okay because she won, but what a stupid ass move. Like, I don't get it. So this is at, uh, at yeah. this point, I was like, I'm done with Thunder Rosa. <laughs> I'm done. Sorry. I'm really surprised it took you this long, actually. Yeah. I'm done. what do you think? This match was pretty good, like you said. Uh, they were able to keep up a pretty good pace. There were some timing issues. And I wonder if what you just mentioned was like a timing thing. I, I don't know. Like, it seems like... Well, how would it, it, it be like, a timing thing? If it was a I timing mean, thing, they would have just let her count to three. Let the ref again, just count like, to three. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to think, like, they weren't supposed to do that at that time. I don't know. Like, it can be more than just, hey, I missed this move or I didn't time this move correctly. Like, maybe this wasn't supposed to happen until later. I don't know. I, I honestly think their, their minds are moving faster than they're actually doing the work. 
you know, they're a little bit too excited. I mean, they can pull off the moves, but I think they just need some time to really kind of slow it down. You know, like, I mean, I don't, they were able to put up a pretty good match. They were able to keep up. So, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. I, I, I don't see how that could any, how anybody could be that dumb and in the moment to where you're like, Oh, Hey, like, one, two, hey, I'm about to win because this idiot girl has put me in an arm barb with her shoulders on the mat. Why don't I pick her up and power bomb her? No. Come on. That was just dumb. I don't care, like timing issues, blah blah blah. Trying we, to give him the benefit of whatever. the doubt, but there's the no there's no is, defense of this. The weird thing for me is like it's not so much what happened with her in the match, like I don't know. I, I wasn't the biggest fan to begin with, but she's just She's just kind of souring on me as a competitor. I'll tell like you, I'll, I'll tell you what's wrong with Thunder Rosa outside of her ring work. She is such a like a hothead Latina stereotype, mm. and that's really a problem too. Yeah, that promo was like, I don't know, like it was just her yelling into the screen. But yeah, that's her, every promo she's done, like I'm coming for you, I'm coming for you, and then I'm gonna beat your ass, and it's like, okay. I mean, I'm sorry if that's controversy or not, but that's pretty much what she is. She's a, she's a stereotype, and that's not that doesn't cut it today. Yeah, yeah. So we've got the Japan side of the women's tourney, and it looks like it's going to be on YouTube. So cool on Monday. Check yeah. it out. Oh, yeah. Cool. So Shivani is with Jungle Boy, and thank God they say that Marco is okay after being kidnapped <laughs> last week. I know you were so worried. I actually yeah. said I actually said a, a prayer last Wednesday. You put up a candlelight vigil to yeah. make sure. FTR, okay. please don't hurt Marco too badly. What? <laughs> too badly. I like that little uh, that little kicker at the end there. Yeah. So too badly. So Jungle Boy says, you know, he they didn't talk. Uh, they didn't tell on them and blah blah blah. This was the you know. He wants to talk to F straight to FTR. This was his biggest fight. He beat you. He beat Dax, and he wants to. Look, you know, he didn't want them suspended because he wants to look them in the eye and says that FTR is his bitch. Anything you want to add on this? No, it was a good promo. The only thing that I gotta say is that AEW wrestlers really like to call each other their bitch. You know, I, I don't know. It just seems like they could come up with another line of, I don't know, derogatory. Who, who else said that? Scorpio said that. Um, to Jericho. Who else? Okay. Um, I, I, I mean, I guess I haven't yeah. noticed, but yeah, if, if you noticed, then okay. I believe you. I want to say Jungle Boy said it to someone else, too. I think he might have said it to Jericho. It, it just seems to come up a lot. Like, you're going to be my bitch. And it's like, okay, guys, it's kind of overused. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got the lineup for next week. FTR is going to take on Matt and Mike Seidel. So first we got Ryan Nemeth and now we got Mike Seidel. Like, yeah. I mean, maybe he'll be, be maybe he'll be really good. I don't know. It could be a banger for all we know. Yeah. Mike Seidel might be the best thing since, you know, <laughs> Dean Ambrose. I don't know. He might be. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever happened to that guy. But. So we've got Hangman and Matt Hardy and Private Party versus the Hybrid 2 and Chaos Project. Can't wait for that one. Sting calls out Team Taz, which is kind of weird because it's like, why would you announce this? Like, <laughs> isn't him saying, I'm going to call out Team Taz? Isn't that him call calling out Team Taz? Like, why, you know, <laughs> like, I'm going to announce an announcement. Like... <laughs> What? Sting sending out flyers for this. <laughs> That's like, I mean, if he, if Whatever he, banner. if they're announcing he's gonna call out Team Taz, that's kind of like he already just did, right? Yeah. <laughs> Be there. And then at the uh, the tag team, uh, the women's title eliminator, Serena Deeb is gonna take on Riho, Riho, and then the Young Bucks are gonna take on Santana and Ortiz. So I guess somewhere down the line, Santana and Ortiz pondered it and was just like okay we'll take we'll get yeah, it. we'll take I the tag it. team title shot next week why not man right? <laughs> it's there's like a less than one percent chance they win but if they do 
awesome. Talk about it. Maybe some good brother action will come in. I don't know. Maybe it's, they'll screw it up somehow. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess this is not impossible, but I, I would be shocked. I mean, yeah. it could actually, it would be very interesting too, right? I mean, let, let's say they do win. Then they would have to take on Jericho and MJF at the pay-per-view. So yeah, that does, absolutely. it could be an interesting storyline. Yeah. And that would really, because, you know, a lot of championships don't change hands on Dynamite. They do on occasion. Uh, the tag team title changed hands on Dynamite. Um, yeah. On the cruise. TNT always changes hands on Dynamite. Not always, most of the time. And then uh, uh, Kenny, Kenny just won it on Dynamite too. Yeah. So you never know. You never know. It would be pretty nuts. Uh, so might be something to watch next week. Yep. We've got the main event. Kenny Omega and Kenta versus John Moxley and Lance Archer. And they are now, now they're all talking about this whole New Japan thing because Excalibur mentions that Kenny Omega was part of the Bullet Club in New Japan. And he says that Kenta is part of the Bullet Club in New Japan. It's like, well, you learn something every day, right? So. I guess it's not a t-shirt brand after all. No, it's a t-shirt brand too. It's like, I guess it's like one of those like, you know, it's kind of like Samsung in Korea where like they, they make TVs, they make phones, they make refrigerators, they make construction equipment. They're like a, they're like a financial services company. This is Bullet Club is like freaking everywhere in <laughs> Is there a Bullet Club bank? <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're going to tell me? Probably. You know, Bullet Club convenience store. The whole shebang. Uh, Bullet Club underwear. Because it's a t-shirt brand already. Right? So, here we go. Because this match actually lasts... Uh, well, before we get into that, how did, did you like this match? How did you like this match? This match saved the show for me. That's right. You did I, say that. Yeah, I, I think I've let it known on here before. I'm a huge fan of these types of matches. Uh, not the hardcore crazy where people are getting their eyes gouged out and, you know, completely bloodied from head to toe, but where they use the whole arena to their advantage. That's the type of stuff I love. Like, hey, it's like, hey, who says we have to wrestle in the ring? Other than the stipulation that, yes, you can be DQ'd. But if that's not in play, like, I'm going to use every advantage I can get, whether I throw you to the stairs, take you to the kitchen, you know, yeah. it was great. I, I really like this. I thought I thought this was a banger from head to toe. So we've got a lot here. There, I've got like a whole page worth of notes for this. So let's just I'm just going to go for it. So at the beginning of the match, Kenta wax Moxley with the briefcase. Archer jumps Kenny. Kenny uh, Kenta wax Archer with the briefcase, but it doesn't work. But then uh, he gets chop blocked by Kenny. Kenta pushes Kenny away so he can kick Mox and they're arguing, but they still beat up Moxley even though they're arguing. And then L Archer hits a pounce and a clothesline. Mox gets the advantage on their team. Hurricane Rana by Kenny sends Archer out. Knee by Mox sends Kenny out. Kenta and Mox square off. They uh, trade elbows. Yeah, he uh, Kenta goes for the GTS. It's countered into the paradigm shift, but then Kenny cracks Mox with the trash can. And then Kenny, really good here. He does the you can't escape. He actually hits it. But it doesn't count because it's done with a trash can onto Mox. So he doesn't, he still has not actually hit the regular you can't escape combo in AEW. So they hold, uh, Kenny holds a trash can for Kenta. Kenta does a diving drop kick onto Mox. Archer cleans house with the ladder. Mox dives onto Kenta. Archer tosses Kenny into the ladder. Archer whacks Kenny with the cookie sheet and they go to picture in picture. And. I was I decided I would watch this picture in picture and you can tell that they were just stalling because <laughs> there was like one move during this during this commercial break and it was uh Kenta doing the busaiku knee while Mox was on the chair. You know, and some people be like, "Oh, he stole that from Daniel Bryan." It's like, "No, Daniel Bryan stole it from him." So, oh yeah, so yeah, Kenta, I figured out who this guy is. He's the uh, he's Hideo Itami from WWE. That's, that's where I know him from. You did mention that, that he looked very similar to someone from WWE last yeah. week, didn't you? Yeah. No, I thought he looked like Michael Nakazawa last week. 
And then you made. I could have you said he looked like Hideo Itami too. And then you, you? did I say that? Maybe. And then you yeah. made the joke of I guess all the Japanese people look like, look alike to you, like, the old racist joke. <laughs> that wasn't a joke. That was a fact. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, they uh. So okay, so one thing too I wanted to say about this picture in picture. Did you notice this too? I did not see a lot of commercials for the Go Big Show this week. Yeah, actually, that's true. <laughs> did, right. it, did it bomb already to where TNT is like, all right, we're done? Or, it. Uh, or, is it, or is it over? Maybe every episode's over? I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, it only debuted like a month ago. Yeah, did what? they only film four episodes? I have no, no idea, way. but yeah. I mean, I maybe they did have ads for it, but I just didn't even notice because you remember before before it, it debuted, it was like every single every commercial ad, break. every commercial yeah. break, there was a, an ad for the Go Big sh show. And then now it's like, I couldn't even remember. So, yeah. So anyway, back from the break. Peter Avalon must have said something that Kenta didn't like because we come back from break and he gets a... Kenta hits a GTS on Peter. And then uh, Archer hits a choke slam on Kenny through Avalon's sofa. <laughs> Which was made of wood. wood you noticed? <laughs> yeah. Like, 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 we're talking about the most uncomfortable bed sofa you could imagine. I was like, this looks like it'll be fun. And then it, you just hear this sickening thud when Kenny hits it. I was like, yeah, that was made like, of wood? <laughs> what, what is, what was up with that? But <laughs> anyway, poor Peter Avalon, he gets a GTS and then his sofa gets destroyed. And then Mox hits a stiff kick on Kenta for two. Excalibur notes that Mox kicked him with his combat boots. So I wonder if Moxley's mother also wears combat boots. <laughs> Do you remember that from when we were kids? That joke, yeah. That was like a huge, in that was, that was a huge insult back when we were kids. That your was mama, yes, yeah, it, and it's it was like you know nowadays it's like your mama's so fat or you know your mom or whatever. But back in our days, like your mama wears combat boots was like the biggest insult. That that was that was fighting words back then. Yeah, and it made like no sense. It's like yeah, okay, It'd be like uh, so. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, like what does that mean? Like, what what's so bad about a a woman wearing combat boots? I don't get it. Yeah, but okay. So then we've got Mox and Kenta fighting in the kitchen, and <laughs> <laughs> another line of the night here. So yeah, another line of the night here. Mox puts Kenta. Uh, he flips him onto something. I don't. It'll ruin the joke if I say what it is. And Excalibur says, like, Mox putting Kenta onto the kitchen surface. <laughs> and JR just said, it's called a table, Excalibur. <laughs> and Kenta, anyway, Kenta hits a DDT on this. And he puts uh, Kenta in the yes lock, which I, I think he actually stole from Daniel Bryan. And then Mar mm -hmm. uh, Archer hits him with a box of potatoes. And then Mox <laughs> hits Kenny with a potato. And Shivani says, he potatoed him. Did you get this joke? No, I didn't. So this is an inside, inside joke. So uh, I'll, when uh, wrestlers go off script and like hit somebody for real, oh, they kind of say like, you potatoed yeah. him. Yeah. Mm, okay, I got it. So I guess that they they also, um, <clears throat> I'm guessing this was pre-tape and they needed to fill some time because we've got a replay from some action earlier in the match. And it's like, a good 20 30 seconds i don't yeah that was odd. they've That's never the thing i can think of they've never done that before but you know. yeah they cut away it's like what 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 we just watched the beginning of the match <laughs> yeah. i don't need to they don't i it. mean it's not they don't do it's not this is not the nba they don't usually show you know recaps and stuff during the match no less right yeah like sometimes when the match is over i guess they'll show like a replay a replay of the finish or something but yeah, not during the match. Anyway, we're in the home stretch, guys. Mox whacks Kenny with the kendo stick. Mox tries a kendo shot off the ropes, but Kenny hits a V trigger. V trigger on the mo onto Mox. He lands on a table. Archer tells the announcers to get out of the way, and he's gonna power bomb Kenta onto the announcer's table. But in the badass move of the night, the complete opposite of Thunder Rosa, Kenta reverses the power bomb. He ducks under a clothesline from Lance Archer. He runs, dives off the stage into a double stump onto Moxley through the table. Talk about badass Kenta. 
Awesome. So Archer, t uh, Archer tells Kenny, I'm coming for you, meanwhile. <laughs> and uh, Jake is on the apron for some reason, Jake Roberts. And a choke slam by Archer on Omega. Archer goes old school, mood cell on Kenny. He goes for the blackout, but the good brothers are out. Kenta does a spinning back fist, but he gets a big boot. And then Carl, Carl Anderson hits a gun stun on Archer. Jake hits a short short arm clothesline on Carl, and then Gallows takes out Jake. Kenny is going to go for the V-trigger on Jake, but Mox comes in with Lucille, and he beats everyone's ass. He, wa he walks into a GTS by Kenta, and then Archer takes out Kenta, and he goes for a double choke slam on Kenny, Kenta and Kenny. But, uh, but then the Good Brothers break it up. They hit a Magic Killer on Archer. Kenny hits a V-trigger on Archer, and then he goes for the one wingo one wing angel on Archer, and I'm thinking, there's no way in hell he's gonna hit the one wing angel on Archer unless the Good Brothers help him out, which they do. The Good Brothers help Kenny Omega lift up Lance Archer, but then he actually does hit the move by himself, which was very impressive, and that gets the W. Kenny Omega and Kenta are your winners of this tag team all out fight battle craziness. I like that. Yeah, what and a match. A, and after the match, Kenta is beating up Moxley on the outside still. So yeah, this was a this was a banger. This was if you don't have a lot of time and you you know our recaps aren't good enough, just watch this. Yeah, this is all you really need to know. Watch, uh, uh, watch other than the, Sammy, Sammy leaving the inner circle was pretty good too. I was just but. gonna say the same thing. Just watch the video package of Sammy and the inner circle stuff. Yeah, and just watch this match. This match was great. It was worth. It's worth every minute. Awesome. I'm surprised that I get it. You can't you can't have this every week, but I'm actually surprised that uh Phoenix and Pac didn't come out to help. Oh you yeah. Know? I was like, well, the good brothers are here. Phoenix and Pac gotta come out, right? I mean, and you could have still had the same ending. Or private at, party. At some, at some way. Yeah, that's true. Pri exactly. That's another one I didn't even think of. But I guess, you know, Mox and March were on their own. I like that they made Archer a monster. I mean, they took yeah. all four guys basically to take him out. Even though it's too bad he had to take the pin. Somebody had to take the pin. I didn't think Kenny was going to take the pin. It There's definitely no wasn't going to be, gonna yeah. Him. It wasn't going to be no Kenny. Gonna be Kenta. It's not going to be Kenta and it's not going to be Moxley. So it was like. Yeah, it had to be Archer, right? Yeah. The yeah. only other way I, I, the only other, the only other thing I could have saw, but I figured they would never actually do this, would the, the, I, I guess I would say the next likely. Likely would be Kenta pinning Moxley, and then because they're still gonna have their uh their title match coming up in New Japan, and then the next likely scenario after that would be Archer pinning Kenny, because then that would set mm. up something that would set up uh you know Archer and Kenny if they want to do that for the pay per view. I don't know what they, because you know. mm. we don't know at this point right now what Kenny's gonna be doing at the pay per view. It probably it seems oh, like shoot. it's. It seems like it's going to be a rematch between him and Mox, but we don't know for sure, right? Yeah, he brought up a good point. You're right. They haven't announced who Kenny's going to face. I mean, the, the, old, the, the only match... The, well, we do know two matches now, but the only match we knew is uh, the street fight. But I don't know, because you know that might be off the table now, because we don't know what's going to happen when Sting calls out Team Taz <laughs> next week. That, that That's up in the air now. But then we do... And yeah. also the tag team... Uh, championship match. We well, we know that MJF and Jericho are going to be getting title shots, but we don't know if it's going to be the Young Bucks or Santana and Ortiz. Mm. So we don't, yeah, we don't necessarily know who Kenny is going to be wrestling, or if he's going to. I mean, who knows? At Revolution, they might do some kind of big old. He's teaming up with uh, the Good Brothers, and I mean, they could do that too. You're right. I mean, with uh, if they have the Young Bucks lose to santana and ortiz and then they have the inner circle battle for the tag team championships and then they can have some big you know 10-man tag match with kenny and the good brothers and the young bucks versus moxley and i don't know whoever Pac, everyone Pac, else yeah Pac, Pac phoenix archer and somebody else penta I penta i guess yeah penta see yeah that would yeah. that could be a i don't know they might do that that'd you be know. a crazy match yeah that would be nuts. Yeah. You never know. But what I do know is that we are about to wrap things up. But do you have any other thing, any other pearls of wisdom before we head out? 
Nothing. It was it was good. All right. So that's it for us this week. We'll be back next week, as always, to recap AEW. But in the meantime, if you want to know when we are on live or, if, you know, to know when this gets uploaded to YouTube, give us a like, subscribe, all those good things. And until then, be good, stay safe, and we will see you later. Thanks for tuning in, guys.